Every now and then, a piece of kit gets announced that makes you sit up and take notice. It really gets your mind ticking over and gets those juices flowing. Well, maybe not your juices flowing, but it really makes your imagination run wild about the possibilities of this new bit of kit. And that's exactly what it was like for me when Skywatcher announced the Star Adventure GTI. It had me running credit card in hand to my significant other, justifying why I need this mount. And my thoughts were, if it's just half as good as what, you know, the specs say it is, and spoiler alert, it is, then this was going to be an absolute asset to my gear bag. If you're new to the channel, welcome along guys. My name's John and my passion is traveling to dark sky locations and imaging high resolution images of the night sky. If that sounds like an interest you, smash that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future content. Now, before we get into the review of this new GTI mount, it's disclaimer time. So recently I have jumped on board with Skywatcher Australia as an ambassador ambassador for their brand. They don't have any input with these, these videos that I make or my opinion. So the opinions in this video are mine and mine only and misleading anyone doesn't do anyone any favors. So this review will be my honest opinion about this mount. Anyway, let's get stuck into it. So a lot's changed here and there's a lot to talk about. We can obviously see where its DNA has come from, the original Star Adventure mount, which has been the backbone of so many astrophotographers and Milky Way photographers for years and years now. And this redesign is, in my opinion, one of the biggest revelations to come out of the amateur astrophotography world that I can remember. And we'll get into the details of that later, but let's just say this appeals to the absolute beginner in the same way it appeals to a seasoned professional. So let's jump in and have a look at what's changed. First thing we can see is that the wedge itself is built into the mount now. And I'm almost gonna go out on that limb and say, polar alignment is enjoyable. Maybe not quite, but it's super smooth, buttery smooth for polar alignment. The fine tuning is just leaps and bounds ahead of its predecessors. Counterweight, so we can now use two different counterweight locations depending on where you live around the world and if you've had issues with counterweights hitting your tripods in the past. Speaking of tripods, this can still be used with your ordinary photography tripod, so no need to go out and buy a specialized pier or mount for it, you can just use whatever you've got. You can purchase a pier and a mount for this, but if you just wanna use your photography tripod, you can absolutely do that. Now, going into Poloscope, no more Poloscope Illuminator. That little finicky plastic thing that everyone always lost or everyone always lost the battery out of. This is built in, so it makes polar alignment and using the Poloscope a lot easier. Into the power system, so AA batteries. So this thing is completely portable. And when we talk about the capabilities of this mount in the future, you'll just see how much of a game changer that is to have so many features and have it be so portable. We've also got the option to run 12 volt DC. If you, you know, you're, you're that kind of guy who wants the power tank, has got all the setup, you can still run your 12 volt DC. We've got an auto guiding port in the back here. So full auto guiding, and obviously it's, it's now tracking on RA and deck. So full auto guiding capabilities, hand controller port. So even though hand control is a sort of a thing of the past these days, if you're still old school kind of guy and you want to run a hand controller, you can still do that. We've got um, a computer cable here, so you can still hook it up to your computer. If you've got that, you know, that workflow set up in the field that you run auto guiding and all your stuff through your computer, that's available. We have a snap port, so camera control through the mount. And we've also got an on off switch here. So, you know, those people who complained in the past about the dial on the side turning on and flattening your batteries, Skywatcher have listened, it's a simple on off switch. So I mentioned that this appeals to absolute beginners exactly the same as it appeals to seasoned professionals. And that may sound very strange, but I stand by that and let's look at why. So, like I've just gone through, all the automated features on this, auto guiding, hand controller, setting it up to your laptop for all your workflow, for you guys who, you know, all over astrophotography, you've got big rigs set up at home, but you're looking for a more portable mount that you can still control the same way that you control your big mount. This does it. Now, for your absolute beginner, 
<laughs> the biggest problem in the past was polar alignment and finding things in the sky. Now, we all know here in the Southern Hemisphere, polar alignment for a beginner can be an absolute nightmare. Now, with this, having the SynScan app controlling it, we can do a three-star alignment. And for you seasoned guys, you'll know that three-star alignments aren't anything new. The biggest difference is, it's so much more user-friendly with the app. It tells you, you know, what stars are visible, their brightness, their location. So it makes three-star alignments a lot more straightforward than the old hand controllers scrolling through everything like that. And just simply finding things in the sky. So trying to find faint objects and star hopping from star to star to, and star charts and all these kinds of crazy things to find where you're going with a long lens was just borderline impossible. With this, find what you want, hit go to, and it will take you straight there. So it's an absolute game changer for the absolute beginner to go down that rabbit hole of astrophotography. And it's also a game changer for you seasoned professionals who want a mount that you can literally put in your carry-on luggage, fly somewhere dark, and, you know, get high quality images. So using the three star alignment method, I've aligned with three stars using the SynScan app. And it's just told the mount where it is in 3D space. Now all I've simply got to do is ask the mount to tell me how far out of polar alignment I am. So when I put this tripod down, I didn't even look through the poloscope. I just looked at where south was, adjusted the latitude base to match where I am, and just roughly pointed at south. So all I've got to do now is adjust the latitude knobs and the old azimuth knobs to get the start in the center. And it's that easy. So we're all polar aligned. The mount knows where it is in 3D space. We're polar aligned and this is the exciting bit. In this app, it's just got all of tonight's best objects. So what you can see from your current location. There's no need to tell it if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, Northern Hemisphere, anything like that. It knows all that because you're connected to the app. So let's give it a go. Let's go to the Carina Nebula, one of the Southern Hemisphere's most famous nebula. This just makes life so easy. That's awesome. Camera's pointing at the Carina Nebula, and I'm shooting on the Sony A7R2, which is hydrogen alpha modified, so we should get some beautiful colors happening tonight. Lens-wise, I'm on the Sony 70 to 400 at 400 millimeters, so it's really gonna test this man out. No auto guiding, this is straight out of the box how you guys would get it, so this is really putting it to the test at 400 millimeters. So, I'm going to be shooting one minute exposures, ISO 6400, and I'm just going to shoot until I get bored and, you know, maybe shoot something else. That's the great thing about this mount and the app itself is it gives you so many targets on the app that you can just pick and choose. So I'm going to play around tonight, shoot a, different, a few different targets, and we'll see how we go. Let's get into it. So Karina's getting really, really low on the horizon now. I've got about, I think about half an hour's worth of exposure time on it. <laughs> and I'm not even sure it's in focus, so we'll have to see how we go with that one. Massive learning curve here. I guess with this and long lenses, I probably should invest in a batten off mask, but we'll see how we go. Now, with Karina setting down low on the horizon, it's actually bringing the Lagoon Nebula into a perfect spot overhead to image. So that's the next step. 
let's rip in and have a go at the Lagoon Nebula. And I love this thing. Let's go. I honestly don't know what I did before this go to me out. So now that we've got those deep space sort of images out of the way, it's time to get into my nitty gritty, which is, if you've been following along for a while, you'll know it is tracked panorama. I am that kind of guy. So I've switched the rig up here, got rid of the telephoto lens, and it actually worked out really well that I could swap my whole setup from my original Star Adventurer straight over onto the GTI mount here with the indexing head, ball head. Um, you guys know the drill. So. I'm really interested to see how this goes uh, for me in my niche of doing tracked panoramas. And although I'm not gonna shoot a full arch tracked panorama tonight, what I think I'm gonna do is maybe like a five or six panel mosaic and just stack a bunch of images per panel of the core region of the Milky Way. So I'm gonna shoot it on the Sigma Art 41.4 and same again, Sony A7R2 Hydrogen Alpha Modified. And I'm really interested to see, you know, how the user experience is with this GTI mount for track panoramas. What a fun night. That was absolutely awesome. I always love trying out new bits of gear and even though it doesn't happen that often, I've really been looking forward to testing this man out ever since I've seen it announced. So it's awesome to get the first night in the bag and have a bit of a play around with it and share my initial thoughts with you guys. So I guess we better talk about where this sits in the Skywatcher lineup. And generally in the past, people compare mounts based on payload. Now this has the same payload capacity as the original Star Adventurer, but I don't think you can sort of put it in that lineup based on payload capacity because this sort of sits on its own. It does have the same payload capacity as the Star Adventurer 2i. So why would you buy this? Like I said before, this appeals to the absolute beginner as much as it does to the seasoned professional. Seasoned professionals can use all the automated features in a super small package that can literally fit on your, on your luggage in the aeroplane. And beginners, it's awesome for polar aligning, finding things in the sky that you just can't do with the original Star Adventurer. So I guess the big question, will this mount replace my original Star Adventurer mount? And the answer is no, not at this stage. So I still see room for me to own both mounts and utilize both mounts. So old trusty, the original Star Adventure will still be my go-to mount for really wide field tracked Milky Way work. And this one for a little bit longer focal length stuff. So I really look forward to, you know, jumping in and doing some longer focal length stuff. And, you know, if I only can take one mount with me, it'll probably be the GTI because it's so versatile for both long focal length stuff, and also tracked panorama work. And there are rumors that the new GTI will have the ability to do automated panoramas. So fingers crossed that comes to fruition and I'll be the first to let you guys know when and if that happens. Once again, thanks so much for joining me again out under the stars for another night. It's been an absolute treat. I hope I've given you guys plenty of things to think about and my mind is just racing with the possibilities that I can do with this new mount. So stay tuned. I've got some big things planned for this summer. Anyway, that's another couple in the bag. It's late. It's cold. I'm off to bed. Until next time. Cheers, guys.